You know, over and over again I say, we don't make mistakes, we have happy accidents. So today, let's have a happy accident and see what we can make out of it. What's up guys, welcome back to RC Everyday. Back again on the five window right rod build. Been taking my time on this one. Um, just got a few little things to work out here. We're not far from driving it. I don't know if we'll make it there today or not, but um, got all my rods and spacers and scale hardware out. <clears throat> First thing we're going to look at is hooking the steering up finally. Since the last video, I haven't even messed with the leaf springs. Um, I didn't even realize at the time the top leaf on this side is not the same size as the one on this side, so <clears throat> I'm thinking maybe I can swap that out for the shorter one. It's got more arch and it may push this down and look right and even things out. And we might be able to get by with that. So I'm going to, oh, don't know where my leaf springs are. I forgot I packed them. <laughs> House still hadn't sold, so I'm still kind of in limbo. Everything's half packed, but I've got all my hardware here. So we're going to look about making steering link here. I've got the RC4 drive M3 Heim joints. I like these. They're a little sloppy, but they look a lot more scale. I've got them everywhere on this thing already. I'm running out. I didn't put them on the rear because you're not going to see any of it with the body, none of the four link. So, yeah, just use them where I need something pretty. So, I'm trying to make something that fits this and I'm trying to keep it all one color, but I don't think that's going to work. I've got a 20 mil, 15 mil threaded spacer, RC four wheel drive. And these are, if I had to guess, 10? I don't know. The only other rod I have is a 40. I don't think that's going to work. That's going to be way too long. Crap. Alright, so I think I got it figured out. Um, put some 15 or some 10s in there with the 15. And I'm going to go ahead and attach this here. And I'm going to add a spacer on this side. So try to keep it parallel. Don't want it interfering with the tire. I've run into that issue on the fronts of these a lot. And another scale bolt. This will be close enough to get us rolling for now. I don't have the right combination of things I need to be the exact length I need. So the servo arm will have to be tilted a little bit probably. It's not a big deal. I can get this spacer in here without everything falling apart. All right. Come on. There we go. Looks like it'll barely clear the wheel. Still got to tighten up that servo. Or Actually, I need to space that out while we're here. Um, actually, my little universal hardware kit, since that is, I think, some smaller hardware. Those are M2. I've actually got some washers, so should only take one washer. We'll get those dug out because this stuff's all still sealed. Up. I think this little hardware kit was like 20 bucks on Amazon. Might have been cheaper. It's in my store below. But it's been pretty handy so far trying to work on that Easy RC little 18th scale thing. I've about fried my nerves with little teeny hardware, so this is going to be a great challenge. Uh, let me pull one of these screws out and make sure. That's, yeah, these are wrong end. These are some of that weird. I think it's a. It's got a standard what size is this? Two millimeter head, but it's a smaller, smaller uh, thread, which is nice because you can get a better grip on them. Higher quality stuff. Yeah. So and this is going to be tricky. Pull a couple out. Alright, I'm going to do some of this off camera so I can cuss and scream at it.
All right, guys, that then turned into a big engineering project. Those were 2.5. I have spacers for twos and three, M3. M3 ones were too big to fit between the screw and the servo body. I found two that would work, but they were thinner than the others. <laughs> so I just wound up moving the entire servo mount forward. I just walled out the holes a little bit. Um, I did, when I went in and put it back on, I did Loctite them because those are some oddball uh, tapered head screw and I don't have anything a little longer to really get into those bolts and I don't have, or nuts, I don't have any other nuts. I don't even have a lock nut, whatever size that was. And uh, yeah, we had to make it work before, we'll make it work now. And it actually worked out really good, happy accident time. The, uh, I, I guess the passenger side hole I wallowed out a little more, got the servo tilted just a hair that way, which perfectly correlates to the angle of the grill. So, we bought ourselves about a quarter inch, or an eighth of an inch, and we have no interference with the servo arm hitting the grill. So now, full lock this way puts it right there. So that, it just couldn't have happened any more perfectly. And that was completely on accident and dumb luck. So, winning. Um, I didn't really have a direction for this video when I started it. I just knew I wanted to, I could throw that on there pretty easily. And um, now, since I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and make a grill mount. And I'm just gonna use some sheet metal and we're gonna use the uh, bolts for the leaf springs, which I hate to take off, but I've got no choice because they're kind of self-tapped in there. I ran a tap into that, but it was not the correct pitch, but it worked. So I'm a little nervous to take them out, but I think I have some more of those screws in case I screw those screws up. And um, yeah, I'm just going to make some little angled metal pieces and I will mount them to the grill and then we'll just take those back screws out there, hopefully just the backs, and we can uh, just have two little L brackets that mount the grill. And then I forgot I bought a water neck for the scale V8 because you can see that. Uh, I'm not going to run the belts and the pulleys and all that. One, we don't have room with the servo, and two, the grill sets so close to it. Not really going to see it, but I did want to do the water neck because that's on top, and I think I still have <clears throat> somewhere a piece of the actual RC four wheel drive radiator hose and maybe even a clamp. If not, we can RC engineer something. But <laughs> got those, and also got the. Mickey Thompson valve covers. I put these on the RC floor drive giveaway rat rod. It looked pretty cool. It's kind of an old school hot rod look. And um, yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna put the headers on yet because we still have a lot of work to do it. I'm scared to death I'm gonna break them because they are pretty fragile, they're resin printed. So we leave those off until the very end. You can see I've already broken an end off of one of them, which sucks, but I only have a couple more pair of those. These were the some prototypes when RC4 wheel drive designed them with me. <clears throat> um, I think I can get them from Shapeway. RC4 wheel drive has a Shapeway store. If I remember, I'll put a link in the video description. They have some little things like that that you can buy through Shapeways. High quality print and yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna get some sheet metal if I can find that. There it is. And we'll make some little brackets.
Alright guys, so that's probably as far as we're going to get tonight. It's been a lot of work making these little brackets and they didn't come out perfect. Nothing's ever perfect. Um, it was my second attempt. If I did it one more time, I might make them work exactly like I envisioned, but that's close enough. And uh, those other screws we talked about, I don't even know, those are like M3.5 or M4 or something that I ended up mounting the leaf springs with because... I screwed it up the first time, so we went with a larger size, drilled it out, tapped them. Um, I finally shaved down those screws as you saw, because if they don't make something we need, we make it ourselves. <laughs> That's all we can do. And uh, it worked pretty well. It's a little tough to get in there. The headlight's in the way, but it works. And I still don't have... I, my leaf springs are packed. They're at my mom's house in storage, unfortunately, so... I can't fix that side yet. I'm going to have to take those out again, which is, I'm dreading doing because that was such an ordeal to get it all lined up. Even though I used the leaf spring to measure and mark the little bracket to drill the hole, it was off just a little bit, but that's just how it always goes. And not using precise machining methods or proper tools or anything other than eyeballing it, so that's what we get. But it works. The front suspension on this actually feels really nice. We've got side to side movement it's just this kind of stuff is what really excites me the chassis work the engineering behind it this is where it's at for me I, I it's hard for me like to make an interior for this body and, and hide the electronics and stuff i don't get into all that like a lot of people do and that's that's kind of limitation for the channel and the builds i have because i don't take it to the ninth degree like everybody else does but the eighth degree is fun and we get there, and we've definitely got something that nobody else has. And um, I'm pretty excited to see how this works. The steering has turned out fantastic. That was one big hurdle I was afraid of, was this ridge in the grill and the servo arm being able to clear it. And the way the servo just worked out, again, Bob Ross moment, happy accident. It tilted at an angle, and it just worked out perfect. I was hoping to have this straight up and down, but because it's not, it clears this ridge in the grill. And everything jobs perfectly. So, next up for this thing, we've got to run it. We've got the servo hooked up. We've got the grill mounted. I'm not going to put the valve covers on in this video because it's just more tiny screws and my hands are shaking. And yeah, just don't feel like messing with that right now. So that's that's cosmetic stuff that can be at the end. Um, next step, I think we got to get a drive shaft. I've packed my drive shafts too. Dang it. So I've got to order a drive shaft. I'm going to measure this up. It's pretty long and figure out some sort of electronics mounting whether it be temporary or permanent or what yet i don't know but get this thing out and see how it actually drives make sure it works everything functions and jobs right and then we'll mount the body i've got to make a new firewall for the body to clear this scale transmission and the wires and all of that um it may be a bit i've got to find my box of my scale v8 parts I've got this yellow tote here that has a lot of scale V8 parts, but I didn't have the hose for the radiator in there. It's in another box with some other V8 parts, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, once it drives and runs, mount the body, windows, dash, seat, steering wheel. It's really all you need for a rat rod. 
Um, you don't even really need a dash, you just need a steering wheel. But we'll have to make something inside the body. I'm thinking along the lines of what we did with number three. We'll just do a sheet metal dash, glue it in, do some kind of gauge looking thing, and uh, find a cool steering wheel to mount in it. And we'll come up with some kind of battery slash seat. I'm sure, the, well, depending on the pinion angle and how all the drive shaft works, we'll just have to go from there. But I'm digging it. This this thing is different than other builds. These wheels and tires are kind of what started this whole build. Uh, these are from that Eagle Moss Jeep Willys kit. And uh, period correct look. They're hard as a rock. It's not going to perform great. It's probably going to be a better drifter than anything if we can even get any steering contact because the front tires are just as hard as the back. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. We engineer as we go. Keep it scale, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.